Hey everybody, this is Perch. A couple delays to talk about. Um, Non-stop Spider-Man. No, I, you can't. You cannot make this up. Uh, has been further delayed. Um, <laughs> you cursed yourself with that name, Marvel. I mean, come on. Yeah, at this point, um, I, 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 I do wonder a little bit when a title like regularly delays and delays and delays. I think it's best to just stop. Uh, wait a while and then start over as opposed to just keep running with these delays. I mean, if it's something like Doomsday Clock, then you don't really have a big choice, um, you know, or a civil war, an event like that, or even the Ultimates uh, that had some delays. And it's it's better to just kind of hold off. But in this way, um, you know, Children of the Atom, the Vita Ayala book uh, that is, uh, is about to end. I think it's on issue five and it's going to go to issue six. Um, and I think it was always intended as a limited series. And then people flirted with the idea of maybe it's a real series, but then it's a limited series again. Or maybe Marvel always just had it as a limited series. And that's just how they view everything these days. And uh, who knows? It's it's hard to tell what the truth was and what kind of the customer community and, and people on Twitter who don't actually buy the comics, um, you know, what, where the truth lies and all that. But with Children of the Atom, in, in fairness, they just stopped. Like when, when the title was going to be delayed and COVID, they, they just halted. They waited until the next year and then they launched it and they've kept a fairly regular schedule. And that's, you know, how crazy is it that at Marvel, we can point to Children of the Atom as being a, a title that shipped regularly. And that was nice. <laughs> it's, it's, it's benefits. Anyway, nonstop Spider-Man. Yes, it has been delayed. Um, it is. I mean, at this point, I think what three issues have come out, I believe. Um, and it is uh, we're going to be waiting a while for number four and number five. Um, it's it's going to be. Uh, let's see. Number four. Number three was delayed from May to June. And then four was delayed until July. But now it's being coming out at the end of August. And number five is coming out in September, which means I think this title was originally solicited, I want to say in February of 2020. So we're we're going on 18, we're getting close to 18 months and five issues. <laughs> and um, nonstop Spider-Man number six is just nowhere to be seen. Um, and then, uh, you know, the nonstop Spider-Man trade paperback collection, big brain play. I, I don't need to make the joke, do I? I, I know. Anyway, uh, that's been delayed into November, uh, but it's unclear whether a trade paperback will include an issue number six, which doesn't even uh, is not even looking to come out. So I, you know, it's uh, what what are you going to do? Um, the other one, the other big delay. Well, there's a couple here. The other delay, uh, Marvel Voices Identity, um, has slipped into the end of August. So that was supposed to come out, I believe, end of July or start of August, and now it's end of August. So, you know, I, I do, it's kind of like an anthology book like that uh, with a bunch of short stories that do not have to worry about continuity or, or anything else. Uh, that one's kind of, yeah, that's kind of weird. Anyway, um, I, one, I'm one i gonna, just going to have to make one more joke about it. So nonstop Spider-Man number five, uh, the original solicitation there um, lists itself as Okay, so we haven't been 100% honest with you. All right. No, we still won't be stopping. Well, well, really? And then it goes, it's just there's something we've been teasing you along with that is really a trick on both you and Spider-Man that, well, you're going to have to read the issue. I mean, some at some point, I suppose so. Anyway, uh, so that's th th those titles have lost. The other slip, though, um, and I have to believe this is potentially, um, you know, a, 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 a bigger problem is that the uh, Black Panther ongoing series by John Ridley, Juan Cabal, which uh, was going to release in uh, August, um, has been slipped to November 3rd. So that is a, a more significant three month delay uh, for this title. Um, it, uh, Black Panther, obviously with COVID and other things, uh, had massive delays as it wrapped up its last run to the point that it, it did, it did limp across the finish line, um, in terms of kind of sales and, and everything else it, uh, I mean, God, dude, does it need to be said in 2021 that 
long delays and confusing shipping schedules tends to take all the air out of the sails of comics that it's it's just a disaster for for comics when you do that it, it really hurts um the momentum of a title uh but Anyway, at least, you know, in this case, to their credit, uh, they are you know, whatever these delays might be. And I do have one theory here, but um, the delays are uh, they're not even starting. Basically, they're not going to put an issue one out and then delay several months for an issue two, which would be really stupid. Uh, they're just holding off completely and, uh, and and just waiting until November. So in many cases, delays are a result of the artist getting behind or maybe there's a scheduling conflict or, or sometimes there's a marketing issue where they're, they're trying to put other books. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here because we know enough about some of that. We know Juan Cabal is actually a, a very reliable uh, artist uh, in terms of, of timing and schedule. He's got a good track record. And John Ridley is certainly somebody from outside of comics, but... Uh, there was the next Batman. There was some. He's he's been doing some work for a while that that launched on time. Now maybe he had an insane window at DC to get this stuff done. We don't know, um, but his work has been coming out pretty reliably. So I'm I'm guessing in this case, the delay has nothing to do with actual creator slips or anything else, and has everything to do with them just pushing this book into the Penguin Random House deal and not distributing it for in August and September through Diamond. I think this is all about kind of getting the getting Penguin Random House stacked uh, for that time period. Now, um, from everything I've heard uh, from people inside, uh, the first quarter of this, the October, November, December, which uh, is, the, is are the first three months of the Penguin Random House deal, uh, Marvel is desperately trying to have just just own the comic shops during those months more so than usual they want a bunch of big launches they want a big bunch of big promotion they want to take advantage of penguin random house in this new relationship to try and you know get comic shops to flip over to order directly with penguin random house and not you know penguin random house through diamond they want to put some incentives in place they want uh to have some some power with the penguin random house deal they want to have some uh, some leverage in terms of, of how they work. Uh, Marvel is getting into a place where they will be a fairly small fish in a big pond with Penguin Random House. Uh, that, you know, I need to start with Penguin Random House. <laughs> PRH. I'm going to start saying PRH. I hate pronouncing all that. PRH um, distributes a ton of material from a lot of different publishers, and, and the footprint is much bigger from others than it is for Marvel. Um, it's, uh, so, you know, Marvel was used to being the number one top dog could call the shots with diamond at penguin random house. They're going to have to try and, you know, find their spot. They're going to have to find their leverage and, you know, money is going to talk a lot more than some of these other things. So, so having kind of big debuts, you know, not, not just, not just unit sale numbers, but things that they can market. It is an easy story. If you're a PRH to do a big press release on John Ridley, who is, uh, you know him from the movies, Black Panther, number one, you know, really Alex Ross cover, here it is. I mean, that's, there's a lot in there that they could, uh, they can create news stories around and get some attention and some hype for both Marvel and their company for for Penguin Random House. So, you know, they're gonna serve up a lot of things like that. So so that's, that's my theory for the delay. Um, but it is it is interesting to see so many. Um, I'm told that the X Men delays are going to continue. Um, they're they're just they continue to be um, a lot of different pieces. Uh, one last note to end on um, the uh, which I, I you know I I done a video and then the news broke right after it. I never circled back to it. Um, on the bright side. Uh, DC is returning to the long Halloween. So uh, Tim Sale, Jeff Loeb are putting out a new special on October. It's a one-shot, 48-page prestige format book. I'm sure it'll have black labels somewhere branded on it in some way. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, I, it's funny. It doesn't show it on the cover that there it's a black label, but it, this feels completely like a black label thing, but, but who knows? But anyway, there is a Batman the Long Halloween special. So if you missed this news a couple days ago, in October, Jeff Loeb, Tin Sale, returning to that world for 48 pages, basically. Uh, pretty cool. That's a comic that a lot of people definitely have fond memories of. And, and so, you know, good, good on them. They're, 
that's uh, every now and then it's nice to just have something come out that you know fans want. So n- nothing wrong with that. Anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts. Are you planning on getting these titles? How do you feel about the delays? And thanks for listening.